Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Kill 10 Rats. Welcome to Serpent in the Staglands. Uh, we're gonna watch the intro quickly and then we're gonna jump right into gameplay. My lord Erline, I pray that a strong wind might hasten the ship bearing this letter, for it carries dire news. My host has warned me of a curse that will befall our moon lord on the longest night. Be on your guard for spies and false friends. Distrust the servants of lesser gods. Cloak the moon lord as you can. But I fear he will find no sanctuary in the Staglands. I will follow this letter west when I am released. I hesitate to reveal more until I arrive in Corum, but take heed. The Carrion God welcomes mortals and gods alike. There we go, Serpent and Staglands, the game released today uh, on GOG.com already, and on Steam it's going to be releasing, I think, uh, depending on your time zone. It's not out where I'm at yet, but uh, you may be able to get it at least within the next couple of hours. It's a fairly old school CRPG. Um, sort of think Baldur's Gate, uh, that level of gameplay and also graphical fidelity, so if you're on the lookout for something that looks insanely good, like, uh, you know, not even the enhanced edition of Baldur's Gate, this is like the the real deal, this is like Baldur's Gate 1999 style, so be warned. Uh, we're gonna start a new game to see what the gameplay is gonna be like, and, you know, let's, let's just have a look, uh, you know, the settings, as you can see, you are not overwhelmed with choice because it's simply not necessary. Um, yeah, start a new game, see what that's about, and answer a few questions. When the gods were formed and you claimed the moon as your dominion, which god did you ally with? And yes, we are in fact a god. Or rather, our character is a god who ends up in the mortal realm and cannot return back to the moon, which is his dominion. And the choices we, we make here probably have some impact further down the line, so... And of course they also say something about our character, like about our, our orientation. So we can pick the Carrion God, the God of Spring, or the Trickster God, which, you know, has a bit of a warrior, healer, thief kind of connotation. I'm gonna go with the Trickster God here. Not sure, it doesn't seem to influence our, our stats in any way, or our starting stats, but... And when you peered through the clouds one night and saw a small fleet of boats tossing in the rocky waters near the coast of the Staglands, lost and despairing, why did you reach down and part the clouds so your moonlight could guide their way to safety? This is again one of these choices about our personal motivation, which I quite like. Um, I admired their ambition and hunger for knowledge of new lands and did not wish to see such spirits quenched. I would have not wished for so many to die. I knew such an act would inflame gratitude or sheer coincidence, so we can be very random, we can be very good, we can be very greedy, or we can be, I guess, sort of ambitious. I'm gonna go with ambitious. It feels a bit like a divine job interview at this stage, but, you know, let's see. When you first set foot in the stack lands and showed yourself to the new settlers, what animal shape did you take on? A black furred wolf, a slinking red eyed lynx, a great white tailed fox, or a magical four horned antelope? Um, black furred wolf, no question. Are we quite done yet? It seems not. And the dryad that you seduced, all right. After a winter solstice festival, what gift did you leave behind as you slipped away from her as the moons appeared into the dawn? A white rose, a singing wisp, a sparkling citron, or good memories? And we're gonna go with a singing wisp, just because I find that quite amusing. And I think that's the final question, so you should be closing your book now and let me get into the actual game. Thank you very much. 
As you can see, there is not an incredible amount of voice acting in the game, or rather, none at all, but, you know, this is, this is, <laughs> I guess, one of the genres or, uh, you know, style of games where this actually benefits the game with regards to the depth it has, especially if you're, as this game rather quite obviously is on a budget. Um, so yeah, we will hopefully have a lot of descriptive text and whatnot. My Lord Nikolai, what's happening? Why are you still here? Have you laid here all night in such a state? Airline, finally. I'm glad to see you can stand. Are you continuing your celebrations? I'd invite you to assume a mortal form and share a cup of kafera, but I believe you drank all of mine last night as you masqueraded among my villagers. Or were you turned down by all the pretty maidens? So we came down from the moon to masquerade as a mortal and celebrate with the villagers. Have done, Erline. My visit is of a most serious nature. Something has happened. Forgive me, my lord. Pray, tell me your tale. As I was casting spells to open my portal to return to the moon, I found myself blocked as if my portal was unlinked. I laid here most of the night ethereal, trying every spell I knew. That is grave indeed. Do you have any suspicions who might have closed your portal? In my stupor, I dreamt of a dame in a cloak with green eyes. She was reading my past from a tome, as if she was reading a eulogy. Could this be a prank in bad taste? Yes, but mayhap done at the hands of another god? This cannot be the work of a mortal. Possible, but I know of no one who would do such a thing. My portal was an ancient gift and not easily tempered with. Even more serious then, my brother is a scribe to the counselors, you know, being skilled with letters and has told me some things, small things, that seems odd. That seem odd. A missing counselor, spirits pouring from their chasms, insults traded between races and places of power. And when is the mortal power struggle not filled with bad tidings? Nay, you were right, this must be a matter of gods. Aye, but mayhap I am jumping at my own shadow. But how can I aid you, my lord? I cannot open your portal to get home, and without a better guard than my scroll-bound acolytes, I cannot create any real sanctuary here. As dangerous as it may be for you to travel in mortal form, for you know you can be slain as such, I fear it is your only way of finding any answers. And here we have a first choice. You know more of this land than I. As my visits have been more of a pleasure bent than observant, I'll trust to your wisdom, or if that's the best you can do, I'll take it. I'm gonna go with the latter one. What form would my lord take while traveling the stagnants as mortal? Let me consider the choices. So here we get the character creation menu. We have a number of races. I will not, or rather races, hello. I will not try to occupy too much of your time with these. I'll just quickly go through them. As you can see, there is a fair amount of choice. These look rather appealing. They seem to be of the frosty persuasion. This is a sort of a noble start. You have a, a, a number of, of descriptive texts uh, with each of the races and you can pick and choose. You can choose your attributes. These intelligence and dexterity are more focused on uh, spell crafting and casting. This is a resistance uh, and uh, spell grade based skill. This is more about, you know, uh, dodge chance. This is your physical hit damage, etc. I'm gonna go with a sort of a castery type build, so I'm gonna go with intelligence and a cult. And we are gonna name him Nico because gods are not very creative when it comes to disguising their real identity. So hopefully we're not getting anyone to call us to go bowling. You'll want companions to protect you and give you consequence. You can certainly hire mercenaries to join you once you depart the temple, but you can also create some additional avatars now to accompany you for the time being. So you can already create a party before you're venturing forth, or you can just seek out companions as you may, and that's what we're gonna do, because there's already two of them right here. As you like, my lord, I can offer the services of my nephew Wilhelm and our strongest acolyte, Catalina. If you wish to engage Wilhelm, you'll find him wandering about upstairs. Catalina is out in the courtyard working in the gardens. Pray send them back to the temple when you can, as they're both important to the temple and rather fond of Wilhelm especially. I'll do what I can. Uh, there is a stormmaster in the western wing. He can sell you some supplies to start your journey. I'll give you some emeralds, but I can't take too many from the temple purse without arousing suspicion. I wish I could vouch for every member in this temple, but I think it's safer to trust no one. Which means I must live with the knowledge that I'm sending you out in the world with little besides your wits and a few gems. Don't berate yourself, airline. Your aid has been invaluable. What I can do for you is rather is gather a disguise. If anyone asks, for now say you're a merchant, and then when you're ready to leave, meet me outside the doors in the courtyard. 
You shouldn't risk being seen together now that you're in mortal form. Anyone with enough knowledge to know of your portal must know that you'd come here first and spies might be lurking in the shape of temple visitors. Very well, we'll meet then. So here we are, this is the gameplay. It should look fairly familiar. This statue depicts you beckoning the first settlers to safety, so this is basically our own altar. I like the fact that this game immediately gives you a sort of strong motivation to go out and explore because you have just been marooned in the world through some unknown means and you are, you know, theoretically very, very all-powerful, but now you are stuck to being a mortal and you actually require the help of mortals. That's a, that's a really, really interesting prom uh, not promise. What, 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 am I, what am I trying to say? An interesting setup, I guess. A dusty book. Okay, you are not Wilhelm. Where is Wilhelm? This is also a barrel breaking simulator. Like you can bog yourself down with some contents of the barrels. There is some descriptions. If you click this, shelves of simple volumes that are covered in pictures and diagrams that tell a variety of stories, some historical legends, etc., etc. So there is a hell of a lot of detail at least right here at the start of the game when it comes to looking at things. There is also, of course, a copious amount of loot, which is always nice because this is the type of game where you want to, you know, just walk around and steal everything that's not nailed down. Like you do. And the first thing I want to steal is Wilhelm. And this is him. Hello, Wilhelm. Greetings, traveler. Can I be of aid to you? What do you do here? I'm learning Skylore and I keep the books in order. Sometimes I assist the cook or airline with accounts as well. Uh, airline said you might be willing to escort me to Emerald Metallis. What aid would your company bring? I'm handy with throwing elixirs and I'm a Good woodsman, my ma and pa would often send me out to set traps before I joined the order at temple. And there is one option that I haven't tried yet. You can bind Wilhelm's soul to your bidding. I guess we can sort of divinely subjugate them in a way. I like your company, join me. We're not gonna do that quite yet. And here we have a little splash screen. Your new companion hastily packs a satchel for the road and you are on your way. But we are still where we left off. And we can go to our friendly neighborhood store master down here somewhere. Yeah, there he is. And there are so many barrels to break that I don't even know where to begin. So let's not do that. Let's just check this. What? Oh. You're not allowed to... Oops. <laughs> I like it. Come on. Come on in here. Save me, Wilhelm. Okay. Let's maybe assign ourselves... Hey. Can we not do that in combat? I fear we cannot do that in combat. Oh, we can. Okay, this is a, a sort of a healing spell and a damaging spell. And we can actually start channeling the healing spell on ourselves. Ooh dear. He is going to kick our ass, isn't he? Okay. There goes Wilhelm. Oh wow, okay, we are going to severely get our ass kicked here. This is actually something nice that I... Unintentionally, I guess, I'm showing off right here, which is that this game lets you do a lot of stupid stuff, but you will also pay the price. Uh, let's... Actually... Load a save game. Hopefully this is it. Otherwise I'll just redo this quickly and get back to you right away. Okay, let's just, <laughs> let's just head on out and talk to Wilhelm and pick him up and then head on out because I also want to, you know, get the 
get a little bit of the actual gameplay that's not in the first just peaceful area because there is some of course exploration to be to be done in this game and uh, you can fairly immediately outside of this uh, get into combat with goblins and the like we should have a quick look at this because we can invest in these skill points and I want to invest in one healing and then one damaging spell for our main character and for this gentleman here we don't have any available skill points so let's just talk to the store master here see what we can buy he has healing potions a brewing pouch an elixir pack a herb kit that's all still slightly mysterious to me what what the action what that actually does um i guess this is maybe something that lets us do crafting and the like potentially i think we should be able to at least pick up like a a kitchen knife back there we are however also going to be able to pick up a sort of a tanky character in the very near future because Catalina who is waiting for us just outside where we are going to head just right away um, she has I think an axe and a shield if that's the same in every uh, playthrough so she should be able to assist us with the, you know, getting getting horribly murdered part of this. Uh, although these acolytes, you know, are probably fairly strong. Uh, one thing I'm, I'm wondering about with regards to that acolyte is um, there is a spell uh, that you can learn. Where is it? I think it's this. Morph into cat. So you can actually sort of disguise yourself and maybe that's something that you can use to stealthily resolve these sort of situations and just steal the contents of that uh, of that cupboard. But you know, we're not we're not that kind of god right now. We're we're the good guy. I mean, you know, as long as no one's until no one's looking, then then we're we're just gonna take everything. I realize I'm not doing this in the most, you know, exploratory fashion. There's probably a lot of interesting secret stuff to find in the first area. And that's as well as maybe, but for, for the moment I just wanna give everyone sort of a nice impression of, of what this game's about. And uh, yeah, you know, you can talk to uh, just about everyone who's here. Everyone has some dialogue. Even the chickens outside are, you know, interactable. Um, painfully barbaric, if you must know about what this place is like. Not a good meal to be had from here until the gates of Corum. This temple boasts of a sumptuous beauty, yes, but the acolytes have less brains between them than one of those chickens in the courtyard, especially that ox and ropes working in the courtyard. Uh, wise advice, farewell. Speaking of the courtyard... Let's head on out there and go find Catalina. But first we are going to be approached by airline again. Click on glowing objects to learn more about them. Yes, that's the bits where it sometimes has that text hovering. You know, all in all, probably very useful to keep that in mind and give everything a look because uh, I don't think this game will be as mm, forward with presenting you the resolutions to problems or quests or even the quests themselves without you having a more detailed look around. Erlein is standing near the gate with a scroll in his hand, bags packed and several worry lines creasing his brow. He hails you and Nico steps forward. 
It might all be a prank, but I cannot shake a feeling that dark times are upon us. It seems unwise to draw attention to yourself, so I've prepared a few items for you. I think it's best to travel as a spicer. You're known to be a curious type of merchant that moves freely and asks many questions. Perfect for you in your search for whoever means you ill. I can do that. A spice merchant visited recently and left behind her documents granting her rights of trade. I'm afraid we couldn't locate them when she returned looking for them. A pity, but I'll give you them so that you will not be questioned, even in consuls and guild houses. Anyway, you recommend traveling. You might seek out my brother in Emerald Metallis Consul Library. I'll give you a map. I can at least guarantee he will treat you well. And his libraries are extensive if you believe there's any help to be found in histories of the Staglands. I doubt you'll find much in the northern districts. The lands are so sparsely settled they barely warrant a local government. You seem prepared to travel yourself. I leave immediately to Corum. Your attacker might have more brewing than a locked portal, and where better to hide a plot than in a city? If I find anything, I'll try to get you word. Travel safely then, and thank you for your aid. I'll return as I may. So, as far as the setting goes, the game is sort of described... I think even by its publisher slash developer as a as a Bronze Age type setting, so sort of a, a tad more uncivilized than what you maybe used from the likes of Baldur's Gate. Is maybe more of an Age of Conan type deal. I, I'm curious to to figure that out. The chicken looks at you with glassy eyes. What ho, chicken? The chicken ignores you. Walk away. See, you can even talk to the chickens. Uh, let's talk to Catalina instead, because we need her. Hey, what ho, Spicer? Erland says you might be willing to join me on my travels. He mentioned something of the sort to me before we left. Where are you going? Your impertinence is as unbecoming as your face. Not really. Emerald Metallis, and then you can return. I'd do anything to get out of here. My axe is strong and I won't cause you any trouble. Very well, join us and we'll be on our way. And we can again subjugate her as well, if you would choose that option. Um, but I'm not sure what the benefit of that is. It doesn't seem like the nicest thing to do, so let's maybe not do that. Mm. Now we have gathered our party, and we can now change the order of our party. So we have our uh, lady here with the heavy weaponry. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. I wanted to go into the inventory to have her um, just walk ahead. We have one kitchen knife, that's amazing. And we have Catalina, who is, I think, supposed to have some gear. Am I doing this wrong? Uh, she has some skills. Last time I had her, she had some gear as well. And we cannot do that while we're paused. Okay, right. There she is, she has an ax, she has a Acolyte cloak and she has a round shield, but our other two have nothing much. Like he has some padded leather armor. Actually, considering she's sort of going to tank, maybe we should swap that, but yeah. I'm not sure what this does yet. Okay, so he's a ranged type of and we could just get the kitchen knife in case we're in a pinch, but we're a caster. So essentially, we have some weaponry. Let's go looking for trouble. Uh, I just want to, you know, go head on out here and see if we can maybe find some... Oh, nice, an iron helm. Maybe find some uh, combat to just show off. Is this the helmet slot? Yes, it is. And we can save LP1. There is also, if you press Q, it does a quick save, which is very handy. And I should probably do that more often because this is the sort of game where if you mess with the wrong kind of, I don't know, small animal, you will probably die horribly. Mm, I think this was the way towards the wilderness area. There's also some settlers here, but I don't think you can talk to them. Or at least they don't really have anything in the way of dialogue. So let's gather our party here. 
and see that we march in the right order. As you can see, you know, they're sticking to what we're telling them to, to go. So Catalina is going ahead, which is rather good since she can probably take more punishment. And this is a, a function you can customize where it auto pauses if it sees an enemy. I've set it up that way. You can also switch that off and you can define a, a number of auto pausing um, configurations. So all in all, quite nice. He's already doing the ranged combat thing. We can, oh, hang on, what just happened? Okay, we can do the quick spell casting to heal our tank here. And there we go, she is healed up again. I haven't really figured out the resource for spell casting yet. Because it seems that you can always just cast away. But I'll have to keep an eye on this. Maybe this goes down eventually. There's some sort of magic resource thing that I'm missing. Mm. As you can see, there's also a lot of, you know, information that you can have with regards to your statistics. There's definitely some depth to the game. And yeah, very much in the, you know, for lack of a better word, old school tradition, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's, this is, this gets bandied about so often that it has become fairly meaningless. This is just a, a CRPG in the, you know, traditional style of, of the games that, you know, made this a, a household name, I guess, like Baldur's Gate and Icewind Dale and Torment and, and whatnot, or more recently, I guess, Pillars, but you know, that's graphically, or Divinity even, and that's graphically speaking, of course, a, a different bag with a different resolution, but I, I don't think, I don't think this game is necessarily bad looking. I mean, it's, it, it gets the job done, and um, you'll, you'll, uh, you'll not be hopefully too put off by it, because it, it seems like uh, the type of game that, you know, if you, if you just, um, What am I trying to do? This is not a good idea to do this in the middle of combat, I'm sorry. Uh, right, I wanna cast the healing spell again. This is this is the sort of game if you if you give it a chance, I think you'll you'll get a, a fair number of hours out of it. And uh, you know, just if you consider that the game's setup is, is fairly unusual, the, the story uh, of, of you being basically a marooned god that has to resolve this 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 quest not for somebody like not really you're not really doing this to to help somebody you're doing this for your own sake this is like your motivation is basically you are you're being threatened and um someone's plotting against you and i think that's a really really nice setup like it's a it's a really nice uh way to to differentiate the game from from others Where are you heading? This is, of course, not great. Uh, let's see what the consequences are of ignoring him when he runs away. Maybe he'll bring friends, that wouldn't be so great. And here we can break the, the barrels again. And there's another, another goblin, this time unhurt. Let's try our offensive spell. How am I getting to that? Quick spell book. I'm pretty sure there was a. Yeah, that's the way. Okay, foul creep on the crop goblin. Not crap goblin. Ooh, and there is a lizard down there. That is unfortunate. Because I think those are pretty tough. Let's get our caster and Wilhelm out of the way. And. Let's have her deal with that. Mm. Can we blood cocoon you? Oh god. You are so gonna die, dude. I am so gonna die. Nico, or done away. Okay. Fortunately, wow. 
That is close. Let's see. If, oh god. Whew, that was close. But our heal seems to be fairly strong and uh, takes care of a lot of that. Okay, this is... I'll have to figure out the UI. I mean, this is um, basically me just having sat down with the game for, for about for about a half an hour before starting the recording and just immediately realizing this is something I... I'm not entirely sure I want to make a series of, but I definitely want to show it off because there isn't that much recent footage of the game on the tubes. There is some videos that show of the beta from a couple of months ago, but you know, not not exactly the current state of the game. So I hope this will give you an idea what this is about and how it goes. Oh dear, we are going to get slaughtered. Mm. Let's immediately set up a heal. Hello, Catalina, can you... Uh... Oh, that's a different type of goblin, is it? A proper goblin, not a crop goblin. Oh, Taking some damage. Mm. Please die. Okay. Right. So, yeah. I think I'm gonna leave off here for the moment. Uh, I will make a couple more episodes to go into some more detail uh, further along in the game. Also get a better feel for the rest of it. Um, but I hope this at least gives you an idea of the depth that this game can sort of present you with if you only look at the you know various stats and all the available skills that you have here in various grades of you know I guess tiers of ability uh, as you can level up and just the variety that it gives you per coupled with the, the, the story that it tries to tell through your character where your character is sort of not the, the special chosen one that saves, that saves the world, but a sort of a, a, a marooned uh, god that saves himself. That's a, a really nice approach. So, yeah, maybe this sort of helped you instill an interest in you in, in this particular game. It's, you know, I, I feel it's deserving of, of some attention. And, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching it. I hope you enjoyed having a quick look at... Uh, at the Serpents of the Staglands, and we will come back to this in a bit. And until then, I'll see you, wish you well, and bye for now.